Uh, I am Josh Taylor of JRT3D.com, and I'm here with TheRecreator3D.com. And so the Recreator is taking PET1 bottles, and it's just pulling it through a hot end. We're going at about 210C, and that's just going to our spooler, which is pulling it forward in a pultrusion process. So with the pultrusion, you're pulling it through a hot end, and it's actually reforming it into a straw-like material. So rather than making it into a molten and pulling the molten and working on uh, you know, proper diameters, this is kind of just using the, again, the diameter of the nozzle, way that the PET material works. Uh, it doesn't really get molten until 255C. So again, it's just reforming it into more of a straw-like material. So we do have a hollow core, and a lot of people are questioning how we can print with that. So we just bump our extrusion rate a little, about 130. Stefan did a really great job of tension testing, and. Uh, blew my mind just how much he was able to actually find out about our material and just how great it is. I was working with a uh, multi-material unit and all the waste material just started driving me bonkers. Uh, so one of the, my big things with this project is I'm trying to, again, salvage e-waste. So a lot of the Bed Slinger $200 Ender clones, uh, a lot of people just buy them off of Amazon to learn from. And the way that Amazon allows people to uh, return things if they've had problems, it really has made a whole different industry in eBay as far as unrefurbished uh, re return units. So you can get those for pretty cheap as far as like $90 goes. And if you break the basic components down of a 3D printer, you've got the power supply, the LCD, the board to run it, the hot end and the motor, and that's all we need to run a Recreator 3D. I say if you can find that, then that's the best bang for your buck for a Recreator 3D. And so again, trying to save uh, these printers from going to our trash and ending up on the corners. I want people to start to save them and think about what they can recreate their printer into. Right now we're just stripping our uh, .30 bottle uh, down into an eight millimeter strip. So we do have a golden ratio as far as math is uh, going in this to, I like to shoot for a 90% in, in the filament. And so it's not going to be a full solid filament. The hollow core allows it to go through properly without breaking while it's extruding. And so as far as how the hot end has been modified, we've just taken a stepper bit and just hollowed out the core of the heat break. And everything is stock just back to an Ender 3 head. So I really wanted to just reuse as much as I could without making more trash or something else to stick back in my box of parts. Uh, so I would really like to see people who have an abundance of spare parts start to make this project just because the average person says, I have a stepper motor, I have a hot end. And so we're able to just do that. In my work with Xvico, as far as their uh, repair returns from Amazon, I had an abundance of the X3S units and that pretty much started me out with getting the recreator established. I got a little jolt telling here. And so that was uh, four two liter soda bottles at uh, 25 grams of a yield. So 25 times four, so that's 25 grams right there. And ultimately, the MK5 universal kit that I just showed you over here. This is pretty much every part on here printed is printed from material pulled from another Recreator 3D. You can see on the uh, X3S that I've got here, right now I've got it in our filament runout sensor. And for the most part, for the average person, that's what I suggest. I had so many issues trying to manually hand join this filament with the way that pet material is and just how it acts. It's a fine dance as far as being able to avoid crystallization as well as hit a molten state. So if you're manually seaming it, you could easily uh, ruin a joint. It'll hit your extruder gear and break. After Earth, I'll be uh, working with a hand joiner uh, from Rise Pro. And uh, I'm looking very forward to that for uh, my community members that are looking for a, a cheaper method to be able to do by hand. Uh, so I'm at recreator3d.com. You can find me at YouTube, also on Twitter. Uh, you can find Pet Pultruders United. And uh, I also have recycle3d.xyz. 
where I hope that we can start to promote different methods of recycling in our home. I want to thank pretty much all my sponsors who got me here. If it wasn't for the sponsors of the community, I would not be here today. So I'm very happy of all those people that got me here. One thing that we forgot to talk about what, what was up with all the bottles of shredded plastic that Josh had on display. Obviously, those wouldn't be protruded into filament because they weren't a continuous length of material anymore. Instead, these will go into a single shot, hand operated injection molding setup. Now, the mold he had was a classic CNC aluminum block, but he also mentioned that it would be possible to maybe print some molds for the PET on a resin printer. That's going to be a lot quicker than machining them. And in fact, it's also a perfect transition to this video's sponsor, Ceriotech. Uh, because with their ceramic filled sculpt ultra resin, they've got the perfect material for that. Once it's cured, it can be used at up to 220 degrees Celsius and for short-term exposure, like with the injection molding, it can do even more than that. But Sculpt Ultra is a specialized high-end resin and if you want something a little more approachable, Ceriotech just released their simple resin at the other end of the spectrum. It's an easy to work with, low viscosity resin that is also optimized to be perfectly washable in a mix of water and just 15% alcohol. That is much more bearable than dunking your parts into pure isopropanol. Check out Ryatek's range of resins at the link below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Keep on making, and I'll see you in the next one. Everybody's like, you gotta eat your pizza.